Today, Ed Greenwood is going to share with us how to curse like the elves. And no, I don't mean nor do I mean and I certainly don't mean cephalopod. No, today Ed's going to teach us how to give the finger in Elvish. Not to mention a ton more elven lore, including things like elven funeral rites and information about the star elves who, in the realms, are way more often heard of than they are seen. Star elves, still few and reclusive in the Sword Coast in lands in the 1490s DR. Most well far to the east in the Yearwood in Aglaron. Those who live in the Sword Coast lands tend to keep to notably the High Forest, the southernmost Moonwood, the Misty Forest, and Westwood and to have willing contact with sun elves, wood elves, weld or green elves, moon elves, and half elves. And that's it. They detest everything about crowded cities, especially the smells, and mistrust humans whom they seem as too swift to violence. You never know when a human will turn on you, blade in hand. Many humans may mistake a star elf for a moon elf at a chance meeting, and there are star elves who travel, explore, and adventure in the Sword Coast. Among these are the star elf merchant families of of Evimdrel and Sael, and the noble family House Dalmkes, who believe assimilation in a sentient civilization of all civilized races is inevitable and is better managed so star elves can end up controlling or influencing the unfortunate belligerent tendencies of humans than resisted. In this, Dalmkes differs from most other star elf nobility notably the conservative houses of Lalandra and Ranako. Powerful star elf wizards include Varl Rope, a gruff and prickly loner, male, old, and mysterious. Avea Fonril, a kindly advisor and tutor to many, female, charismatic, seen as wise and caring. The star elf adventurers Shastla Lamera Tash, Reluvrin, she's fiery-tempered, acrobatic, agile, and worldly-wise, usually having backup plans ready in case of treachery. And Telharl Velvur, he's gleeful, whimsical, young, sword-tongued, and fun-loving. Among all elves in the region, as much about these individuals is commonly known as I've given here, with Tash being the best known. But in, say, human cities and among human sages, only Varlvro has been heard of. Some star elves of the High Forest are planning a military conquest of the Reaching Woods to make it a new home and exterminate or drive out the gnolls. Others think this is an unwise, overbold idea that will inevitably give star elves too high a public profile. Treetop holy communities. These tend to be small, very secret, and found in such places as Shilmista, at the south end of the forest, just north of Riataven, the southernmost port of the western half of the Gulfsmere Forest, where it juts into a bite in the mountain range bordering it to the south, in the heart of the Reaching Woods, at about the midpoint of the east of the river Reaching portion, not far from the river itself, in the High Forest, on the east bank of the river that runs from the Star Mounts east and south to join the Delimbier, upriver of Loudwater, about a day's travel by experienced foresters north from Tree's Edge, and deep in the heart of the Yearwood, at about its east-west midpoint in Aglara. There are many others, but they are smaller, or not in the part of Faroon most covered in print so far. If you're enjoying this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon to be apprised of future videos. I would love that, and I will keep on doing them for you because you have enabled me to do so. Thank you. I also just wanted to quickly say, if you're considering supporting Ed directly, it would really mean a lot if you went to patreon.com slash edgreenwood, and if you become a protector of the realms, you can get access to full videos, realms lore write-ups, audiobooks, discord roles, merch, and much more. Or, if you want to get your hands on this, plus a whole lot more nerdy merch, be sure to check out Ed's shop, I'll leave a link in the description. Something that you're sure to encounter if you um, have much to do with an elf or are an elf. There is a rude elvish gesture with a meaning akin to our real world, the finger. Oh, raising one's middle finger. In the realms, the elven equivalent of the finger is to crook one middle finger in an inward, towards oneself curve, while bringing that arm up across your body in an ascending diagonal. I'm going to bump my microphone doing it. There you go. For added insolence, you end the gesture by licking the tip of your crooked finger.
languidly while staring hard at your target. Enough of that. Now, Elven Funeral Rites. Rites vary widely by elven subspecies, by region, by community, and by family, but they always include a prayer of remembrance uttered, often whispered, by the living. When many mourners are gathered, they often murmur responsive lines of this in unison, replying to the individual praying to create what to many human ears sounds like a humming chant. Praying occurs as remains are being treated as follows. Wood elves in the misty forest plant bodies, that is, they bury bodies, of their fallen beneath seedlings, or they plant new seedlings above a burial. Esteemed and powerful individuals are entombed within a living tree, which is opened and then resealed around the body by magic. In our deep forest, elven corpses were seeded with particular mosses, which grow on the decaying flesh, and then they were put on small canoe-like barges, taken to fast-flowing streams and rivers that empty into the Sea of Swords, set alight by night, and sent to a grave both fiery and watery. In Evermeet, particular sorts of trees, notably the curving, grotesquely bowed Antharim, are wounded, cut open in vertical cuts as long as the corpse is tall, and the corpse is bonded half into the cuts with flerara, a secret recipe mixture of natural ingredients, awakened with a simple spell. This dark brown syrup causes the remains to be glued to the living innards of the tree, and the tree to grow with astonishing speed, feeding on, and therefore emptying out into a husk, the remains to do so, to expand and cover over the corpse, and then grow new bark to heal itself. Hi Realms fans, welcome back to another edition of Realm Speak. This time around, we're going to tackle this. Uh, the first name of a, a famous true silver noble in Cormir. How is that pronounced? Is it Aisunder, Aisunder, Aisunder? What is it? Aisunder is how it's pronounced. Aisunder. Except in the old days, way back in Trondath, before people emigrated to what became Cormir, the old pronunciation was A.I. Sandal, A.I. Sandal. And now over time, over these you know, centuries since, in which Cormir has flourished, it has become I. Sandal. You may think, who cares about one oval's name? Well, this is a name that a lot of people have had hung on them, and it usually gets shortened in everyday use to I. And because that can be confusing, it fell out of fashion to give it as a first given name, but it may be your second or third name if you're from a family that has pretensions and therefore gives poor little squalling babies four or five names in a row. So there are a lot of Isunders around. So there you go. That is how to pronounce Isunder. Elves spread the vines by taking cuttings, rooting them in water in the woods, and training them as they grow to drape over branches, fallen dead wood, rocks, and so on, to trail where the elves want them to grow. A good developed patch will typically look like a tunnel of trained growing...